U.S. President Donald Trump and his Democratic opponent Joe Biden have spent their final days leading up to today campaigning in key battleground states. And this morning, we're speaking with reporters from three of those states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Florida. John Misick, who's editor-in-chief at Pennsylvania Capital Star, Jasmine Barmore, a reporter at the Detroit News, and David Smiley, a political reporter with Miami Herald. They're all joining us this morning. Welcome to your morning. Good morning. All right, John, I want, to start, I want to start with you this morning. Um, Pennsylvania has voted for the Democratic candidate in every year since 1992, except in 2016, when Trump narrowly won by just 0.7 of a percentage point. Where does each candidate stand with voters this morning? Emory, as we head into this uh, final day of, uh, of the election, polling is showing Joe Biden up uh, anywhere between five and six percentage points. It's been a remarkably steady lead uh, for the former vice president in Pennsylvania. Uh, as your viewers probably know, he has roots in the Keystone State. Um, he grew up in the city of Scranton in the northeast corner of the state. He's talked about that often on the campaign trail. Uh, I have to point out, I'm really enjoying your Tim Hortons mug in behind your shot there, John. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping for an endorsement with... deal. Yes. <laughs> Oh, well, hopefully they're watching. Uh, today, we know, is when the mail-in ballots will be started to be counted in Pennsylvania. Lots of news around this in the last week or so. In fact, at 7 a.m. is when the mail-in ballots, so, so right now they're being counted. Uh, this is very different from states like Arizona and Florida, where mail-in ballots can be processed in advance. Why could Pennsylvania become the epicenter of the Election Day chaos? Sure, Emory. Pennsylvania doesn't have a lot of experience with processing mail-in ballots, and you're correct in... 60 of the state's 67 county uh, mail-in ballots will start being counted at 7 o'clock this morning, um, actually seven minutes, ago, seven minutes ago. But um, in seven Pennsylvania counties, um, Republican, uh, Rep some of them Republican-controlled, uh, all uh, some of which flipped for Donald Trump in 2016, they're not going to start counting those ballots until Wednesday morning. What's important about that is um, that could temporarily distort the results. Um, it could look initially, because we expect most in-person votes to be Republican, like the, like the race is going Donald Trump's way. Uh, but when those mail-in ballots come in, we know that most mail-in voters are Democrat in Pennsylvania. That could swing the result in favor of Joe Biden. Uh, so that could lead to this so-called red mirage that we've been hearing so much about uh, in Pennsylvania. And that's, that could be disorientating for, uh, for voters. Yeah, and important to remind our viewers here in Canada, we talked about electoral college votes being important yesterday. Pennsylvania holds 20 of those. And as you say, not all the ballots will be counted even by Wednesday morning. John, th thanks so much for joining us. I want to head to Michigan next. Uh, Jasmine, Michigan used to be counted on as reliably Democratic and not a swing state. So why is it unpredictable now? Well, historically, Michigan has always been a swing state. And in 2016, Donald Trump narrowly won the election by, I believe, a 3 percent margin. And um, he did that by flipping 12 of the counties that previously voted for Obama in 2012 and 2008's election, and he was able to flip them, you know, his way. And then he also was able to uh, take the state in 2016 by having a lower turnout in Detroit, which is a predominantly Democratic uh, city. And in this particular election, if the same thing happens, you know, the same results can actually come out. But in the climate that we're living in in Michigan right now, um, specifically with the COVID restriction and, and, and the division that's going on with it, you just never really know which way Michigan gotcha. is going to go this, this year. Yeah, and a lot of eyes also on Michigan because of the fight happening with the, with the governor in that state and with Donald Trump. Um, also, I want to take a closer look at the black voter turnout in Michigan. Historically low. Is there more motivation this time around, given what we've seen in particular in this last year? Well, I guess, based on our reporting, um, it's expected that there's going to be a 50 percent turnout in Detroit, which is the city that, like I said, holds the Democratic vote with that's predominantly African-American. So um, it's not it's not a lot higher, but we're expecting or we're hoping that more than 50 percent will turn out in Detroit. Um, if we want to see this, the state go in Joe Biden's direction. And I'm not sure how much you guys have heard, but today uh, Senator Harris is actually going to be in Detroit encouraging voters to get out and vote um, before the polling places close early or close at 8 o'clock. So it's, it, it's, it's hard to say. Um, Michigan is 
like I said, a swing state. And mm -hmm. depending on what the voter turnout is in Detroit, it's just it's hard to say. Yeah, it'll be definitely one to watch throughout the evening. Jasmine, thanks so much. Let's turn our eyes to Florida. And David, Florida is a big one. We know for Donald Trump, he has spent a lot of time there when he's campaigning. He called it his home state to big cheers. It holds 29 electoral college votes. Why is this state so important in the race to the White House, aside from those electoral college votes? Well, no Republican president has won the presidency and not carried Florida in almost 100 years. So Donald Trump pretty much has to win Florida. It's crucial to his electoral college uh, path to victory. And Democrats believe that they can end it by winning Florida. They believe that if they beat Donald Trump uh, with a clear enough margin in Florida, they can avoid all of the uh, potential election night anxiety around Pennsylvania and mail ballots, just because uh, as much as 75 percent of the vote may already be in in Florida, we've had more than nine million ballots cast to this point. So for both parties, it's important, although for different reasons. Yeah, and it's important to clarify this for our viewers in Canada because your tabulation system works so different than ours. Uh, they started receiving mail-in ballots as early as September, and in Florida, you are allowed to process those right away. So they already have somewhat of a count between the Democrats and the Republicans. Uh, Joe Biden has a small lead as of this moment in Florida in the mail-in ballots that they've counted so far. Florida also has one of the highest case counts of COVID-19. They have more than 800,000 cases since the pandemic started. Uh, Florida is also a really popular destination for a lot of Canadian snowbirds. So what are voters there saying when it comes to how they view both candidates handle the pandemic going forward? Well, as you can imagine, the uh, views around COVID in Florida range, uh, range widely, especially depending on where you might live. In South Florida, the pandemic has been especially bad. But at Trump's rally at, at the Opelika Airport Sunday night, uh, we saw maybe up to 15,000 people, most of them not wearing masks. A lot of people tired of the social restrictions and, uh, and, and mask mandates. The governor basically uh, rendered all mask mandates toothless several weeks ago uh, because there is just a very uh, different perspective between Republicans and Democrats in Florida as to how the pandemic should be treated, much like there is in the rest of the country. And it'll be interesting to see the extent to which uh, that might push, particularly in Florida, the independent voters who are probably going to swing this election just because turnout will be pretty close between Democrats and Republicans. Uh, John Misick and Jasmine Barmore and David Smiley, I want to thank you each for joining us this morning. It is a long day and night ahead for all of you. So thank you for taking the time to be with us early. Thank you. Thank you.